when Warner Brothers announced that they were releasing a 4K remaster of the seminal Batman Mask of the Phantasm, I hoped against hope that we would finally get some expansive special features. Maybe a full length making of documentary, but at the very least a cast and crew commentary. While we are getting what I hope to be an excellent documentary on the late great Kevin Conroy, I was saddened to see that that was basically it when it comes to special features. Which, not gonna lie, is disappointing. Then I remembered that in my illustrious career on YouTube, lol. I had made connections with some of the incredibly talented people that worked on the show, so I figured, hey, if Warner Brothers won't do it, why don't I? I was able to persuade Dan Reba. I'm Dan Reba. Uh, I directed episodes of the series. I was a character designer early on, and uh, and I did some sequence directing uh, on, on Mask of the Phantasm. Brad Rader. I'm Brad Rader. I was a storyboard artist on Batman all through the, um, the, the first year and a half um, i don't know i didn't make it all the way to the end and kevin altieri hi i'm kevin altieri i was on mask of the phantasm i was a sequence director and storyboard artist and i stole all of the joker scenes to come along and share their recollections on making mask of the phantasm we're going to get started shortly and if you want to skip straight to the commentary then jump to this time code a few things i want to make clear I respect Warner Brothers copyright. I am not uploading the full film. You'll need to bring your own copy of the film if you want to watch along with us. You don't have to do that because this works perfectly well as a podcast, but you'll get the absolute most out of this if you watch along with us. To help us get synced up, I've included the legendary Warner Brothers shield, but after that, it's all Dan, Brad, and Kevin. Periodically, I will be sharing storyboards, sketches, character designs, and the infamous pool of blood cut sequence. With all that said, let's get on with the show. Get ready to press play in three, two, one, now. And turn it up a little bit if you like. I mean, we, we we will have to talk well, over it, but but you know, you still want to. Yeah, and this yeah. this opening sequence when they st were talking to us about doing the movie, that we're doing a movie, they said, and we're going to get CG, you know, we're going to get computer animation, and we ended up just the opening credit sequence. Yep. With the magnificent Shirley Walker. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's brilliant brilliant piece of music um yes yeah i read an interesting fact about this that shirley put in the names of people that worked <laughs> on the music yeah. that weren't allowed yeah. to be credited so it's kind of like a to hell with you i'm putting them in anyway well it, it's everybody actually credited yeah. or not i think it's everyone she knows that that was that was involved yeah yeah well, the thing that's interesting about the CG was that we were also told that we would be able to use this city scape uh, later on. And it was like, those oh, wonderful be great. Names. and we never, oh, yeah, hey, I know those guys. Um, and uh, and that that didn't really happen. We, we, we didn't really get a chance to use this CG city ever. Um, so it's it's kind of. Oh, well. Yeah, and. Um... Well, and I was going to just say that um, Eric and Bruce were actually more the producers of the movie, although they did do their own sequence directing. But they kind of got bumped down because executive producer position was taken over, you know, mm -hmm. so executive producers, you know, and then the original executive producers became producers and then so on and so forth. Uh, Bruce uh, boarded this sequence. Uh, yeah. The, the whole opening part. And you see, oh, broken glass. Something that we're not allowed to do <laughs> on Saturday morning. There. Punch to the puss. <laughs> right. Two punches right to the face. Again, things we weren't allowed to do. And there's alcohol. Again, other things we weren't allowed to do. Oh, so, and real guns. And the, and the gun shooting, yes, you know, in the shot with him. We weren't allowed to show that back then. So yeah. he's already violated all the rules. <clears throat> this is not a kid show. And girls on the wall. And girls. <laughs> <laughs> Sexually explicit. And, and, and this, this, that, that, I don't think they would have let us do that. Um, no, it was just too mean. It's just too mean. So. I 
such a great introduction to the yeah. uh, phantasm. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant design by Bruce. But yeah, really, yes. I think the script only asked for someone to look like the ghost of Christmas future, and that was about it. Yeah. And the rest was Bruce. The, the funny thing was that there was a character similar in the comics, but we hadn't really, they, Alan didn't realize it, and Bruce wasn't really looking at it when he designed it. It was no. only after the fact that we're like, oh, there is a character that looks like this. <laughs> it was, it yeah, it was like Azrael. Like, yeah. Yeah. And then there was also that uh, death guy by uh, Neil yeah. Adams, I think, mm. back in the Neil Adams days. Mm. Grim Reaper. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, there's that wonderful shadow scrim that they put in the corner of the screen that, that was introduced on Leather Wings that we we used a lot of to make the film yeah. look more overused it in some episodes but yeah and i was gonna note i noticed that what you you're screening here is actually the um the square version almost like the television the original cut right. which is how it was originally boarded right He can't, he can't chase her? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he gave up. So, yeah, I found a notebook that has my, my thumbnails for this stuff. So I'm like, oh, so I, I, all these poses of Gordon and, you know, yeah. it's like, oh. But I know that I think Joe, Joe Denton cleaned it up, so. Yeah. But I'll say this is like, especially watching this movie, Dan. Yeah. You can really tell... Um, you know in hindsight you can really tell like sequence directors mm -hmm. because there's a certain look that the characters have like when you draw them yeah you know i know Especially i know I, there's stuff like way boyd boy draws the uh, bruce wayne that's like okay that's very boyd so. yeah and same with frank yep frank Barr. yeah And this was, <laughs> and this was all before cell phones and stuff were yeah. ubiquitous in society. Yeah. Google. <laughs> oh, and by the way, I just wanted to say how good Hart Bachner is. In yeah. Because I mean, you know, there's all praise for Dana Delaney and all, you know, but um, <laughs> actually, I was at the recording when Hart Bachner was recording. And he, these expressions, I don't know how purposeful it was on the board artist's part, Dan, but I, I don't know. Yeah. But it's like, it's, it's like, it's what, dead an on. Oily, what an oily voice he has. Yeah, I know, I know. And and he is the son of the mayor. He is, he is, yeah. which is kind of cool. I love this. Bruce Wayne being... Yeah, Bruce Wayne, the Playboy. Didn't see that much in the show. <laughs> no, you don't. I think uh, <laughs> Craig Kelman did those girls. I think. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Pat. I forgot Veronica Freeland was so angry with Bruce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they worked it out later on. Yeah, yeah. She ends up taking him shopping in Harley's yeah. Holiday and, yeah. you know. See, if this was Saturday morning, that'd all be cranberry juice. Yep. What a Love weasel. This. Love that line. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And just the performances. This looks like Boyd. Yeah, that's Boyd for sure. He, 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 yeah. 
And I drew that painting ages ago for the series. And, uh, yeah. you know, I didn't paint it, but I, I did the drawing for it. It's like, is this. It's interesting to hear how you recycled images because that's mm -hmm. such a central image for these flashbacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just wanted to say for everyone in the audience and just like to allay everything, this is all of this. Not just the the flashbacks, but all of this is pre Batman the animated series. Mm -hmm. This is before right. the adoption of uh, Robin. Dick mm -hmm. Grayson shows up. Um, so I see the whole thing as like like a prequel. Yeah, to the whole series, which I thought was brilliant was a brilliant idea by Alan Burnett, and it was all Alan Burnett's yeah. concept. Yeah, this was Ronnie Del Carmen's board. Yes, so. And I hardly, I don't know why his eyes are so tiny. His eye pupils seem too small in this shot, but I, in this sequence, but it's very, I think it wasn't, wrong. it wasn't like that in the board. Nah, well, oh, that's true. He does, but it looked yeah. good <laughs> when he drew it. It yeah. was like, it looked on model, you know? Yeah. But it's kind of the difference between um, TMS and the Korean studios in right. general. Yes. Not always, but they, especially in this, um, in my opinion, the Korean studios really, really worked off the boards. Yes. Really did. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 the the the, the Japanese studios will will put stuff on model and kind of fix things. Yeah. Wonderful. So Sorry, Brad, I love that um, touch. Yeah, that's such a nice touch where she puts his uh, collar down. I know, Brad. You had some strong opinions about the design of Andrea. Um, um, yeah. Um, I I thought she was um too generic. I I was uh, told that she was um. Hold on. <laughs> <Where's> <laughs> Brad going? Okay, I don't know. I don't know. He forgot we're online. Uh, <laughs> sorry uh, my dogs are barking um oh we couldn't hear um, good um oh, I, yeah. I, I i i thought she was bruce's designs were too generic that she was like based off of lauren bacall so i went and read it a couple of laser discs of lauren bacall movies and sketched her for uh spent an evening freeze framing and sketching her and then worked off of that instead of bruce's models and um nobody said anything about it and then when you know it was animated, they put it on model. So I guess no harm, yeah. no foul. Yeah. Yeah. But and when you you did your sequences, Brad, um later on, if people will see it when you know there's <gasps> the revelation. Right. Um, she was a much tougher character. So the Lauren Bacall kind of yeah. expressions and takes really worked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Also, well, you know, but but we yeah. also need to like fake out. You know, she needs to seem more delicate uh, because Early we on. don't want people to to know, you know. Yeah. Uh, by the way, this was boarded by Butch Lukic. Uh, I believe Frank directed this sequence. Yeah. But, uh, this, but is Butch, Frank. this is all Butch's boards. See, I forgot that. I did the um, I did the tops card uh, art for, for this scene. So I got to look at the boards a lot because we had to pick the angle to to draw for this it's influenced by beverly hills cop yeah <laughs> and i look. love seeing the beat cop version of of uh bullock yeah that's awesome really bullock i love that's the spit take <laughs> <laughs> it's his first time seeing batman though he doesn't even know it he still does, he doesn't like him even now Such a great section. I know I keep saying yeah. that, but I love this film. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, it is wonderful. This this part's really wonderful because he really just see it. He has it, but it's still not. It's not enough. Yeah. He needs the fear. He needs the gimmick. Yep. 
I don't know if you know this, but in the UK, this section was quite heavily censored. Anytime there was something with Ninja Stars or with the hammer smashing the screen, even oh. in the VHS home release, they cut those bits out. So it jumped around quite a bit. Yeah. Really? Mm. Well, then it's probably a good thing that they didn't use the, what I suggested, the caltrops. <laughs> They're just big, nasty spikes. Yeah, they wouldn't have they made, made them into bombs. <laughs> And I also wanted to just point out Kevin Conroy, mm. his performance. And you'll notice that in this, um, when Bruce Wayne, he's almost always the Batman voice. R Radomsky, the press, I'm innocent. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> great. Yeah, this is Frank. Yeah. Frank did this sequence and he brought the board over to me. And uh, because I, you know, I've done martial arts in the past. And uh, so Frank comes over and he puts the board in front of me. And I'm like, what do you want, Frank? He says, well, is it accurate? <laughs> and I said, yes, it's, it's pretty accurate. The martial arts, I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. That was a real throw. Yeah. Aikido style, arm lock. Mm -hmm. uh, and oh, then, my goodness. Yes. Couldn't do that on Saturday morning. Yeah. <laughs> but I like the, the, the 40 style lighting on that. That's really. Yeah. And I love this. I love, oh, this is brilliant. Whoop. Well. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, lemonade i'll bring something stronger <laughs> ah, time passes oh and that's bambi yes that's right because bambi is mentioned in um, yes wings. exactly bambi is it yes so the dark-haired girl is bambi yeah, yeah. voiced by arlene sorkin Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's oh, right. Arlene. Engagement. Engagement. Yeah, you're right. Yep. Yep. Oh, oh wow. An Abe Vigoda. So this... No, so... not Abe Vigoda. Sorry. No, no. This was, uh... who was this? God, um, I can't remember. Because uh, I know we have uh, 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 Miller, uh, what's his name, from all the. Dick Miller. Dick Miller yeah. did some voices, but I don't know if he did this one. Yeah. Um. This Dick was, Miller did the first voice. Hmm, oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. He did. Was, he, 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 he was Chucky. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, uh, yeah. I, I, I supervised this. Uh, Doug Murphy boarded. Mm -hmm. It's a great sequence. Yeah, and I this. love, and I love the fact that um, how black the blacks were allowed to be in this. Yes. Oh you my know? gosh, that—that's the thing, that, the big revelation on Batman, right? Yeah, that black works. Yeah, mm. no, in animation, people are not allowed to use black for some reason. There was no. a stigma against using black as a color, and and that's what like Batman brought it back. <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, they were still talking about it, and when I did the do the evolution video which was yeah. years after this, they were saying, well, you know, you, you, MTV was complaining about how much black I was using in the storyboards. And I said, black is our friend. Yeah. <laughs> it actually, it actually helped to, you know, as a design element to finish things quicker. Because mm -hmm. it hid so much uh, lame animation. Right, <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> But it's like you, you can't have noir without black. I mean, that's yeah. that's what it means. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. like... yeah. And I have my theory about uh, Phantasm's powers. Uh -huh. It's almost like it's a cross between Batman and Zatanna. Yeah. I think she's using illusions and stuff. Well, exactly. Exactly. I mean, obviously, there's some kind of bulletproof, you know, Kevlar, whatever. 
but but yeah. the gas and all of this stuff is just they're they are they're magic tricks they're illusions yeah yeah nice deco weeping angel <laughs> Yep. Bro. Nice touch. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. yeah. Which the shadow comes over, all you see is his eyes and his teeth. It's amazing. Yeah. It's so much fun. Ew. Okay. <laughs> 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 I mean, I, I in my mind's eye, I just see like squishings coming out the side yeah, of the grave yeah. or something. He yeah. should be just covered up, but yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Abe Vigoda. Yes. Oh, he was wonderful in this. Yeah. And this is Mark Wallace. Wow. Right. Yeah. No, because uh, in the flashbacks, we got all of the uh, all of the Abe Vigoda stuff, which ties into um, the relationship because they were at the same recording with uh, all of the flashback Joker stuff. Mm hmm. Uh, Not the. Fan down shot. That's good. Mm -hmm. Slime. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's so skeezy. He is. Yeah. No, it's such a good performance. And it's like sitting in the, I was like really fortunate to sit in on the recording for so much of this stuff because it was uh, watching Andrea Romano, like basically read your mind. Like the yep. second that I had, like I had the second, like I'm look, I'm listening to the voices and I'm reading the script. And the second I have some visual in my head and I'm about to go and say, oh, could I get this? That's what her. That's the next thing she says to the actor. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm like just sitting there with my holding my hands. I'll just sit on my hands for the rest of the recording. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that's she does her homework. She really does. Yep. There goes the secret identity. Mm -mm -mm. And I objected. I didn't think she had to say Bruce. Yeah, I know. That's true. It's a little obvious. So. Ah. <laughs> this is yours, right, Dan? Uh, it's Kurtz, but I did some notes on it. We do a person. I went over it. Uh -huh. um so this was uh yeah i did a bunch of this um so this was this was the shot we borrowed from 2001 to make it clear that he was reading lips and then it turns out that gary lockwood gave that idea to kubrick so i found that out at a convention talking to him so it's like wait, wait, wait we were inspired by you and and, and, I mean, and your, your film it, it was your idea <laughs> That rain's very nice. Not Two Face Part Two nice, but still pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Two Face Part Two. That was uh, the rain pattern. I don't think, I think that Sun Min did do a lot of this movie, though, for mm -hmm. Don Yang. The same people who created the rain cycle you're talking about. Right. Yeah. I love it. There's originally in the original dub, there was like a man's voice doing that. They 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 redid that. Hmm. And then and and 
and Shirley wrote the theme to the auto gyros. Yes, <laughs> a house of the future. Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I insisted on auto gyros. Of course. <laughs> Come on, just because I, I love auto gyros. God, I can't remember who did this sequence. I don't was remember it? either. I it might have been um, Greg Davidson. Really? Was he boarding on it? I, I think he, he did. He, he did was layouts. he was he was doing layouts, but I think on this they may have given him a board to do. Uh, okay. I was going to say it was odd that that Bruce and Andrea are walking away from the car, and then he turns around and sees it again. Uh, so it's like, well, yeah. what, what were they looking at before? Because you know we didn't have enough backgrounds to like fake somewhere else. So yeah, but I don't, I don't, I, I just noticed it the last time I saw. It. And if I was going to critique anything, it's coming up, Brad. Kind of answering what we were talking about earlier about you know the fight that's coming up. It's just like. Uh, I mean, basically, my objection is that Bruce Wayne, like, you know, he kicks ass. And then these guys are all happy and they escape later on, you know, and it's like, what are you hooting about? Right. <laughs> Stacy Keach. Yeah. Such a great cast in this film. You really is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, again. I it should probably be noted that uh, Andrea Beaumont is named after Andrea Romano. Yeah. Uh, that, 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 uh, the way that Kevin would always say before record, <laughs> oh, yeah, Andrea, as a sound check. <laughs> of it became the big running gag at our records and and alan took note of that and said well that should actually be in a film <laughs> so yeah. when he actually says it in the film it's like based on on this gag that we had at or he had with the with andrea at the, at the records yeah smoking things that you can't do right although the and penguin was allowed a cigarette it just could never be lit I, I don't know how yeah. we got that passed because uh, later on we, we, we wouldn't be able, be able to look, do that. Well, it's kind of mm -hmm. like I think like the penguin just didn't look like the penguin without it. Exactly. You know. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. And I think this was Frank. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Because that looks like Frank's storyboards. Mm hmm. No, it's really it's really well done. I, it's... Ow. Yeah. yeah, I find the design of these goons quite interesting because they look like they've stepped out of the wild one. Exactly. Yeah. That's no, the that, idea. That was absolutely what the idea was. Uh, this is this is the past. So, you yeah, know, that's that's the Marlon Brando gangster. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's a whole thing is that the, 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 the whole series is supposed to not take place in our in our timeline. It, 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 it never no. really made sense to have computers to me, except for him. You know, yeah. now you look at this. Bam. Uh, right in the face. Yeah. Yep. OK, this is what I was talking about, like, you know. And I don't know how this could have ended otherwise, but it's just the fact that now he's concerned about his girlfriend and a couple of busted ribs, but well, and I just go and I say like what the only false note I said is how, like how happy these guys are. Well, they got you the know? money. They're, they're happy. They got the money. They don't care about the other thugs. 
<laughs> yeah, they're just laying their buddies are just laying down face down <laughs> it's like he just yeah yeah it's funny because it's like i wasn't clear initially with if he was like concerned like for her safety or and then i realized no no no, no. he doesn't want to reveal himself to her he's he's giving it away that, that what his vow is basically in front of her and he's like oh man do i do i pretend to be a wimp or do i actually batman it up here this is great i don't know if you know if this fact is true or not but I'd read online that this scene was the only scene to not have any rewrites done at, at all. So Martin Pasco submitted the script and it was unchanged, according to him. Um, I don't know. Um, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. this is that, that looks like computer rain to me. That upshot. There was no other way to do that back then. And, 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 this, and we did have digital. Yeah. And this scene right here. I think this was Boyd, but Kevin Conroy's performance is... Oh, it's incredible. Yeah, I wish he just shut up in honor of Kevin Conroy for a minute. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I know he's very yeah. proud of that scene. Yeah, yeah, rightfully so. Yes, yeah, no, absolutely. It's just, it's just like the art of uh, voice acting. You know, he's, yeah, it's really amazing. They really, just, really nailed it. I mean, well, it's funny because it's. I love it. Yeah. this. Is uh, Mark Wallace's secret? Yes, I, I, I yeah. thought so. I thought so. I love the hunch <laughs> on his back when he's reaching for the oxygen it's like it's so cool he's just such a feeble old guy yeah <laughs> i love it beautiful just abe vagoda is so good in this It's like, like spit on him. He's <laughs> so disgusted. And I love that this end shot. I have to, to cre take credit for the very last shot here. I drew the just the last shot, this one. Yeah, that's, I remember that. <laughs> just he's sitting there with his mouth hanging open. Ah, O'Neill. Adams to all the night. Yeah, Adams and O'Neill. Okay. Yeah. I wonder who those guys are. <laughs> Ephraim mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Zimbalist, Zimbalist Jr., people. He does quite I a convincing them. British accent. He does. Oh, yeah. I thought so. Yeah. But I'm not couldn't British. tell you. Yeah, I couldn't tell you where he was from, other than like generally the South. But yeah, yeah I could believe it. Yeah, the, see that Wallace Company. <laughs> this is oh, Mark Wallace. Is. <laughs> that was strictly wasn't a prop. That was actually just from the board. That's funny because Mark did this whole sequence here. Oh, interesting. In the rough cut, the the tall man is in shadow, and I think they decided to like not to not do that um so th that was retaken to show him yeah, i thought mm -hmm. it was too obscured i think originally they wanted to obscure him more 
Yeah. And yes, again, I... uh, this is like, I think that this movie actually is the best Batman origin story mm -hmm. of any of them, including um, including Bill Finger and Bob yeah. Kane's version. Yeah. This is this actually, is a... I think, improvement. And this is Boyd's, you can tell by the hands more than anything. He he has those sort of milk call inspired hands. Mm -hmm. um, so, so. That, that's very, very, very yeah. good. Uh. And I think this is so much better than just a bat coming and smashing through the window, mm -hmm. which they can't do. Yeah. You know, I thought that was just, and it was such a great place to put it, just that yeah. point in his life. He, now he's happy. He's Yeah, it, it takes, it's... He's accepted a, a bright future. Mm -hmm. Uh, introduction of character here. Mm -hmm. Cigarettes, <laughs> they're still <laughs> kill you. <laughs> they're bad. Yeah. And I'll say this about this sequence. There was one end note that was actually cut from the script. And I remember that, um, where this happens. And then the script, he crushes it, looks up to heavens and goes, no, like Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and it's like, thank God they took that out. Yeah. yeah. The vow, the the curse. Yeah. It's it's no longer some you know. And this is this is so good. Mm. Yeah. The music is excellent. Oh my god, yeah. the feels. <laughs> it it yeah. it's so neat because now it's like this is a real tragic choice. You know, this is not yep. a happy thing. It's not this this creation no. of a hero. It's it's like uh, it, it's 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 an obligation. It's the end of his happiness. Exactly, the end of his happiness. Yeah, it's funny. Originally, we panned up his body. I don't. I, that's. I did. Hmm, interesting. They 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 all yeah. altered that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In that picture, the the the, the tall man wasn't wasn't visible for some reason, and I just it was kind of a, a, a goofy choice. This is where Bradley Raider comes in. Awesome. <laughs> it's in. This is so good. And I'm just going to take credit for I know where to put the talent, what I know to excel at. <laughs> and this is so good. Well, I, I realized I was playing um, the Joker like Bugs Bunny and Sal like Elmer Fudd or something. <laughs> yeah, I love that. The little, the little, yeah, still a little vestige. Tyrant. And again, <laughs> and I just have to say to everyone out there, I am so sorry that none of you got to see Mark Hamill perform the Joker. Oh, I know. Because it was it's so much fun to just uh, watch him. <laughs> And that's another no-no. Here we are just talking about the Italian America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the <whole> Italian American. <laughs> I'm Italian American, Altieri. Yeah. And uh I don't I'm not offended. No, no. <laughs> so is that why uh Maroni wasn't used in Two Face? Um, well, you couldn't you couldn't really refer to the mafia at all. Mm. You know, not a Saturday no, morning. 
not on Saturday morning. <laughs> and, yeah. And my grandfather was a bookie, so I got no complaints <laughs> back east. <laughs> and as a storyboard director, I don't think I ever gave you any instruction about any of this, Brad. Well, I, I know that the uh, thing with the uh, robot robot chopping like uh, sausage was a beat that you were into. Oh yeah, but this is you. Yeah. Oop. Hmm, he's gonna save it yeah. for later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's he gonna What's he gonna do with it? I don't know. <laughs> Great. Awesome. He called him a fool. He put his hands on him. (laughs) (laughs) And again, that's like, that's pure Brad. I knew, I knew that you. Well, one of my 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 uh, disappointments on uh, the ba- actually most of my animation adventure action adventure stuff was the timing was never right. You know, it's like I just want to, you know, it's, it's like it's, there should have been longer holds and quicker actions. Everything's just sort of like smoothed out and evenly paced. I mean, I remember that The Simpsons was airing. The first season of The Simpsons was airing when we were working on on Batman, you know, in 1991. And I was Mm -hmm. like super impressed with the timing they got on The Simpsons. I mean, that was the kind of one timing I would have wanted on this stuff. Well, but we uh, we got it on the TMS episodes. Exactly. And uh, the difference, the difference is about like a couple million dollars Uh added to the budget makes a big difference oh yeah huh. our our budget here was strictly um the same budget we'd always been working with huh. you know just expanded into a feature film but but i uh, but i know what you mean because i would have liked a longer hold before batman comes in I, at least get, yeah. get a drink in there but again you know we're dealing with a feature there's a lot of th- we don't have that much time so no. you know it's like this this could have used some more air. Yeah. I think this is Kurt. That's such a good line. The yeah. best. Oh. <laughs> it's like Yeah. And does Batman still think he's got a secret identity at this point? Right, right. I it's funny because I have the, the the rough cut of this stuff and it's like they retook the heck out of it. it it's so much better. The animation actually got was improved. The, the yeah. first the first take that was so much of this was reanimated. Yeah. And this is Mark. Yeah. This is Mark Wallace again. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I just knew it's like he would revel in like the, the grotesque. Oh uh, no, no, this was mine. This was mine. This was Kurt, really? I believe because we forgot the smoke. We forgot the oh. smoke. And I remember doing the, 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 this scene. And, oh, uh, really? and, and I and I was I was like, why did we forget the smoke? How did that happen? Um, but I, people kind of <laughs> <laughs> whoops. Uh, people have come up with I know yeah. the colors wrong here. That was the original, and I don't know why they 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 didn't correct that one. But it was originally pink. But I don't know why the smoke was missing in that shot. I think we 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 kind of logic. Oh, that's that, right. That, that, that phantasm has to seem more vulnerable or whatever. I don't know what, but 
Uh, I don't I don't think there was a really good reason for it. <laughs> yeah. It was just forgotten. But shh, this, don't tell anybody. <laughs> and this is my big objection coming up. It's a really well done sequence. Uh-huh. Some of the better animation. But god damn it. Why where'd this flying saucer come from? <laughs> the bat wing. It's an excellent design, but just the technology is so far beyond anyone in the world. You know? Ah, it's a it's a Harrier. It's a hover. It's it's, it's... no, it's a flying saucer. <laughs> he can just leave it flying. It'll land itself. Oh, it's got an autopilot. Alfred's like doing a remote control from the, from the Batcave. <laughs> Actually, that would have been a good cutaway. Just so yeah. I can sit there with a cup of tea. <laughs> Sipping in a cup so, of tea. So there's the Zatanna thing you were talking about. The, 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 the... Yeah. It's like, wait, how did when did it land? He should have had it like fly off and then come back later, but you know, we wouldn't have a movie if that happened. Yeah. As I said. I do love the spotlight on him. That's really yeah. Yeah, this whole sequence is very reminiscent of Frank Miller's Year One, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, that that that's really clearly the. Oops, that guy's rather bloodthirsty. Oh, no kidding! Well, you know, they think Batman's been killing mobsters. He's like, well. Ah, that vehicle. Yeah. That one that, that was a real vehicle that was in our neighborhood yeah. that we, we actually would drive past and see. Yeah. It's funny. I still. That was the cool thing about. It. Yeah. Cool thing about Hollywood in the uh, 80s and 90s was all that stuff was still hanging around. Yeah. Like that, that was from the World's Fair, by the way, 1938 World's Fair that they built a fleet of these these wonderful vans and we we appropriated it for the show. Somebody was restoring one in, in our neighborhood while we were working. Now it's immortalized in your show. Exactly. Yeah, oh, we they put that. Line there. Originally, that was a glare and they added the you jerk. And the, originally yeah. the beams were too hot. They 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 retook retook it to make them a little more uh, dx'd. Yeah, yeah and a, after on leather wings, we never got to make him let him bleed, and he does no. this. Yeah, I know he bleeds a lot in this film. And all those guys were reused from On Leather Wings, all yeah. the SWAT team. Yeah, which uh, like Brad helped a lot because we had so many of them. We I remember I, I, we came up with the general look, but there were like so many faces. Brad helped with a lot of the cop like crowd scene faces and stuff, yeah. just because we're just running out of like, who else do we take this from? <laughs> you know, it's like yeah, there's. Andrea. He still has. That's that's the Andrea <laughs> line, by the way. That's yeah. the one that Kevin immortalized with all the records. A lot of sweat in this movie. I noticed. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, he still has a secret identity, huh? Yeah. Well, <laughs> just, at least the police. And I love the touch in this that, you know, who's doing the bandaging? It's, you know, who's been fixing him up all this time? Yeah. Yeah. It's been Alfred, his dad. Yeah. He's diapered. <laughs> Di <laughs> Diapers <laughs> and bandages. <laughs> but there's one thing that Alfred won't interfere with. Yeah. Say this is.
かと。Yeah, Dick Miller. Yeah. Rag focus. And I love that music too. Although I swear that that was taken from Star Trek. Dun 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 dun、oh. dun dun dun. dun.、Oh. <laughs> Never noticed that before. <laughs> <laughs> Just little touches here and there. I like、uh, the fact that he has、um, a respiratory illness later on. Yeah, and he smokes the most.、Uh, so it's like we're, it's, this movie is educational. Smoking is bad.、Yeah. I'm just getting engrossed in the film. <laughs> I know,、yeah. I know. It's a. See, this was quite a neat little misdirect、yeah. that completely fooled me when I was a child. Yeah, no, it actually it works. Yep. Yeah.、Uh, and this is where Alfred、oh. shows his true worth. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Yep. No. That's、uh, what he always does. <laughs> <laughs> That、and is the do, most、uh, British thing he does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wearing. Gee, I wearing wonder what his, they were doing. His, his shirt. Yeah. Well, they just they just let her borrow his shirt. They were just holding just, hands all night. They're playing Archie or something. <laughs> Trouble. That's it. <laughs> I came up with that bit. I, I wanted the kiss to be longer, and then and then be interrupted by her elbow like hitting the horn and and be startling. But it, it's like with the shorter kiss, it didn't it didn't really read read that well. And again, Kevin Conroy is so good. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll notice that when he's talking to Alfred, that's the Batman voice. Yeah. Yeah. This is a vow. That cursed vow. That damn painting. <laughs> damn it, Dan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this is yeah. I, I bored yeah. all the seconds.、Um, So that's why that picture couldn't be in shadow. It was wasn't.、Yeah. And originally they were like all red pen pencils, and it was like no no no. It it has to be the one that he picks up when he realizes. You know. Yeah. And then this is Mike、uh, Gogan. Gogan, brilliant boy. Yeah. Hart Bachner is so good in this sequence,、yeah. and、uh, Mark Hamill is so good. And again, it's like the Frankenstein <laughs> triple close-up. Yes, exactly.、It's、like the James Whale. 
And this is particularly well animated too. They really like yeah. we, we we lucked out that the, that a good crew got it. Yeah. No, and I, I mean it's like, and I look at the face, and I'll say this about whatever me or Mike or Brad worked did in this movie with the Joker, or uh, just the fact that all the movies have like he has this frozen rictus grin. Mm -hmm. You know, even, um, even well, all of the live action ones. Mm -hmm. And yet here, you know, he's got a fully mobile face. Exactly. The grin it, is him. Exactly. It. Right. It's, he's like more like Cesar Romero where he's, it's just, yeah. this is. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and that, this is all pure Mike Gogan. Mm -hmm. Turo. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> it's really interesting how the Joker figures out the Phantasm's identity before anybody else. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is so frightening <laughs> oh, it's awesome yeah so do you know if that shot with the shadows there was that um kind of self-censorship or just an artistic choice just artistic choice i mean i talked about it with mike but that's pure gogan mm. and then this and then you'll notice like the there's the building storm oh know? yeah always raining around this hospital yep <laughs> it's been raining since two-face <laughs> and this is like one of the best voice uh performances coming up it's like just just that shot well here everyone i'll let everyone enjoy it just for a minute i'll shut up It's <laughs> so good. <laughs> That's just such a good line read. Yeah. yeah. And I like how he has no mercy for this guy. Yep. Well, you know. And again, to give the script such credit, it's like, it's such a good uh, film noir, like, storyline with dialogue and everything. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah, I won't get anything out of this, Joker. <laughs> oh, yeah. And this one's, I think Mark, yeah, no, this is definitely Mark Wallace's sequence. I think so. Yeah. And again, Mark Hamill is so good. Yeah, everyone was so great in this. There's not a single weak link. No. Um, it's just... That's awesome. Mm. 
And that was the bomb from Harlequin Aid. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is where Brad came in. Right. Oh, nope, not yet. Well, yeah, but it's like, I think um, we also did this... Um, Oh no, maybe. Oh uh, no, I didn't. She's she's in France. They got baguettes. Just just yeah. so you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I think I gave this one to Mark Wallace. I think you're right, Brad. The flashback. To Captain Apple. Yeah, Soprano stole that from us. Yeah. Where he picks up the apple and eats it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, the baloney. The baloney. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Brad. The baloney was my idea. It's such a great game. Oh my gosh, he pats her on the ball. Yeah, but he, oops. Hmm. He saves it, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He does tuck it away. Yeah, he, he just, he loves her. He just, like, there's his own, he wants to keep all pieces of that robot. Yeah. Now, I had a, a kid come to me out after that and said, what's up with that? She had a man's body the whole time, and all of a sudden she turns into a woman. And I kind of, like, shrugged because, I mean, I didn't get any direction on this either. It's like, should she have the um, phantasm's body or her own? And it would have just been too weird to have it her her head on a man's body. Um, well, so I, I, I took it upon I I took it upon myself. Yeah. <sighs> I think the costume there, covers up enough of her that you can't really tell. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a cheap. Yeah, it's, and a knee to the nuts. <laughs> uh, this is one of the great moments in cinema history coming up. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, Ooh, ooh. Yeah, the cleaver. No, the baloney. <laughs> <laughs> I love. He had it. I like. And now it's his turn to jump out a window. I, I, I just realized it's like the turn. Yeah, everyone, turn. everyone gets to smash <laughs> glass. And in no, the script. No, go ahead, Brad. Well, this was difficult to stage because I had to plan out how she could like not be immediately sucked into the um, mm -hmm. wind turbine. So I had to like stage it so there'd be shit in the way that she could like, I'm sorry, stuff in the way that she could um, <laughs> um, grab onto and stretch it out long enough for Batman mm -hmm. to ride in on the motorcycle. And you'll notice how like the music, there is no music. It just kicks out. It's like, and that's like Shirley. Yeah. You wait for the moment when the music kicks back in. There. Yeah. Yeah, and this is, uh, yeah, it's like what you're talking about. You can see the Lauren Bacall in her now. Yeah, yeah. And I don't remember what the script said about ending this, but I know we came up with this, right, Brad? With the I, obviously, it's here, so somebody came up with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you drew the son of a bitch. Well, I... Yeah. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Darn. 
just that finger snap ends everything. It's great. Oh. <laughs> I thought that was a little unfair of her, though, because he really isn't out for vengeance. Well, but it doesn't appear that way. So and she is a murderess. Yes, but they took everything from her. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, they, then, and they were and they were bad people. And then it's coming the sequence that I, the script. By the way, you'll notice like the exterior stuff that we've just been watching is all gigantic, gigantic, gigantic stuff. Very Dick Sprang. But what I wanted to do was the miniature city that I saw when I was a kid when I went to the World's Fair. WB? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, left. And, and that was from the storyboard. Yeah. <laughs> no, and I just I just wanted oh, to do the minute. You know, I wanted to do Batman and the Joker as yeah. King Kong versus Godzilla, you know? Yeah. And it is a, such a World's Fair thing. I think all the World's Fair, you know, the, the 38 one had a miniature city and, and as, as well as the 65. So it's, yeah. it's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a dream come true. <laughs> that ah, I, finally, I get to knock out his tooth. <laughs> and the Joker is really enjoying himself. Ah. You'll just get to know what too that doesn't. And I'll say in the sequence coming up, there were cuts that I really wish weren't made. Um, yeah, Batman takes a beating here. Oh, yeah, reference yeah, to course. surfing. Yeah, exactly. That's like, well, like Kevin has the that, board of surfing guy. <laughs> yep, surfing skateboard culture gets one one knock in there. Yeah, you'll notice that there's four of them. Right. You know, now here's three. And there's two. Where'd the other oh. one go? Oh. Where'd the other one go? Now there's three. Oh, there's three, three again. Again. That's because there was three or four things that were actually animated where Batman gets sliced up like two more times. I'll check and see my copy and see if it's still there. If it's no, yeah. but I remember just time wise, they just uh, yeah made a cut. Yeah, exactly. I love how this shot came out. That looks awesome. I love it when he runs in and out of shadow like that. Oh, it's awesome. Black works. <laughs> and here is where the giant pool of yes. dripping blood was cut out. I have that. Yeah, it's not that a giant, but it's enough to like drip, drip, drip. It's it's yeah. you know. And you know that he's bleeding out, and he has like very little time. And it's it's weird because it's not that long. I don't. I wish they kept it. No, I think that was the only objection Warner Brothers had was that pool of blood from Batman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a few shots here that I just wish that the animation was a bit better. Yeah. Not bad, though. It's not bad. It's fine. But it's just. And then there's a sequence coming up that was cut out where they actually, Batman actually rescues the Joker while they're inside the globe. And that was boarded out, but it was never animated. Yeah. <laughs> 
And here's something that I tend to do almost all the time. Blow everything up at the end. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's like a bad habit, but it was actually written into this script. Yeah. Uh, it's the, the big tire Ferris wheel from the 65 yeah. World's Fair. The Firestone. Yeah, I've got the chorus. And that's and this Wire. is very Brad Raider. No, this isn't me. No, you, you boarded this. Oh, okay. Yeah, we. I think we both did a little bit, but I did definitely this part where he goes and lands in the sewer underground. That's right. I think you did everything above ground, and I did all of it below. Okay, well, I, I don't have any of that stuff if I boarded it. I mean, I kept the uh, I kept my roughs. I didn't get a copy of the finished board right. when I handed it in. In my everlasting regret. Yeah, I know. Me Damn too. you! <laughs> well, I kept thinking I'd come back and get it later, and I just yeah. somehow or another never had the time. But this was all just a resolution that I had to come up with, just because I was like, "How does he not get blown up with everyone else?" Right. Yeah, you know, he doesn't. So clearly she did the same thing. She found that same escape route somewhere. She just got there earlier. Yeah. And this is very classic. Uh, like, what happened to the Joker? Well, it's very classic Batman that, mm -hmm. did he die? You know? Yeah. That goes uh, back to the 60s. Uh -huh. Do you think we'll ever see the Joker again? I don't know, old chum. Perhaps we may. His dad. <gasps> no. And again, my uh, I have an objection to this version of the Batcave, where there's all those trellises and stuff. Whereas we just had a tunnel with a turntable at the end. Yeah. Which made more sense. Look how small that is now. <laughs> the Batmobile wouldn't yeah. fit on that. Oh, that's true. That's really they 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 need to be like boarded the size. I think Ronnie boarded this section. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's a little little bit obscure, but that veil is supposed to, you know, make it very obvious that she's yeah. in mourning. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, eventually. Ah. Bravo. <laughs> boo, boo, boo. <laughs> no, and there was the uh um Yay Kevin. Yay, Kevin Conroy. Yay, Dana. Yay, Dana. Yay, Art. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like it, he's so good in this. It's like it's yeah. unbelievable. It's like and I Hart Bachner was not a quote unquote voice actor, but he was again hats off to Andrea that she just knew who to put in the role. And Mark Hamill uh, as the Joker. Yeah. Yeah, look at all those guys. I know, look at them. Wow. 
No, Jeff reported on this too. I forgot what he yeah. did. Yeah, but oh, yeah, you're right. Greg did. Yeah, yeah, I see all that. Yeah, well, what do you yeah. know? I think. Yeah, I think Greg just did the one sequence though. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, and this song, <laughs> it's weird. This is like. Um, Who's singing this? Tia Carrera. Tia Carrera. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Tia Carrera. It's like, and where did you know? It's like, why did they pick her to sing the song? <laughs> she does a beautiful job. She does. But I don't even think she was in Wayne's World yet. Really? I don't think huh. Wayne's World had come out yet, had it? Huh? I don't remember. I have to, I have to look that up. Um. I'm not sure, but anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Just watching this with you now, it's it's such a tight film. There's not a wasted moment. Everything is necessary. There's you can see why so many people think it's the best Batman movie, full stop. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, not to pat ourselves on the back, but I think that's absolutely true i think it's also the best batman year one and it's mm -hmm. the best uh joker origin story because it makes this makes sense and i give alan burnett total credit because he came up with this plot yep but it makes so much more sense that the joker is a hired thug he's part of the gang he's part of the mafia let's say but he's a hired thug and whatever happened in the Red Hood, whatever happened after this, it's a very short step for this guy who goes crazy to just assume his old job. But now he's going to be the boss. And he survived all the other bosses. And that's the weird thing about this movie, too. It's not weird, but the oh, thing about God. this is like one by one, every member of the gang is killed except the Joker. That's yeah. Right. This song is yeah. so 90s. I unironically love it, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh. I know. Oh, uh... Tia Carrera has such a sweet singing voice. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and it, the, the saxophone perhaps is a little much. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. again... It was the 90s. It was the 90s, yeah. Boy. It's, uh, it, it is amazing how, I, I, you know, 30 years, you know, and, and I remember those those meetings when, when you know, it, it was being discussed as a, as a direct-to-video and, and uh, you know, there were other suggestions for, for, for plot lines and, and, uh, and Alan came up with this and it kind of, it just won. You know, everybody was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it has yeah. to be this. Yeah, I remember no. Paul, Paul Dini had a great Joker Harley storyline that he came up with. Yeah. But yeah, this one won out. And I remember thinking, gee, I want, I want, I want a story about Batman in, in Arkham and, 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 the, and, and, the, and a kangaroo court and all of this stuff. And Paul had independently come up with uh, the trial storyline and had suggested that, but it just, it, it just didn't feel feature enough. Um, yeah. It just seemed like the gang up of all the villains. It just seemed to, to, you know, like, like an annual as opposed to, you know, the, the, the feature. Um, yeah. And so it made a better episode than, than, uh, than this. So I'm, yeah, I'm glad it was one, Yeah, no, and this one, like, it's like, a, as a, it's also, it succeeds just that it stands alone. Like exactly. I said before, it's a prequel to the Batman the Animated Series. There is no Robin yet. There is no. This is before Robin's reckoning. It's before. Um, it's before and, Harvey Dent even becomes, you know, the the DA. And it was, by the way, just so you um, you know, for the record, it was a huge bomb. It was a colossal failure. Um, oh yeah. And and uh, and, well, and and in theatrical release, it was exactly because Warner Brothers didn't know. Typical. I said that loud. <laughs> you <laughs> but did. I mean, if you go, but but Typical. if you go by like Iron Giant and all of that stuff, it was yeah. like they they didn't commit to the feature thing. They didn't understand what they were asking for when they wanted a feature. So it was only yeah. 
Um, and they had some other movie that they were pushing as a as as a, a a big blockbuster that was coming out at the same time, and so they didn't want it to be on the screens at the same time. So we'd only got a matinee yeah. slot. It was like, well, how Christmas Day, and it wasn't only like the first two screenings, and then it wouldn't be. So people would go and they'd see the ads on TV. They'd go to the theater because they know it's playing there, and they're like, what? It what what? It's not yeah. playing here. Oh well, that it already showed in the morning. And you're like, oh, for crying out loud. So it was a week of matinees and, and, and it only, I don't know how many million, but it was, it, it, it nearly made its cost uh, in yeah. its first no, time, I think, I think which the, was pretty I think low. The, yeah, the total budget, I believe, was six million, the total budget. Right. With, with it like so, it, it, marketing and all that stuff into account, because I don't, yeah. I, I don't. Yeah, because yeah. the production was still, like I said, the production, um, what we were doing was the same schedule for all the episodes. It was the same uh, crew that worked on the, you know, the Saturday morning show right. and the daily show. And the budget was not bumped up. It was just, right. we're going to keep, we're going to hang on to the crew and we're just going to keep doing something. And this is what they did. And a little yeah. bit more money was thrown at the end for, for yeah. the CG stuff after they realized it was going to be a feature. Um, yeah. But not much, not, not like it wasn't no. on the front end. It was sort of on the back end. Um, yeah, and the music, and, and, and the and music, music, I think, got more. Yeah, because uh, I well, think we got, we... we got Tara Carrara. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but but um, but then no. after it came out on 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 video, that's when it made a splash. It became a huge rental, and and that's when Siskel yeah. and Ebert reviewed it when it came out on 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 VHS. And yeah. um, I don't know if you're aware of those guys, but they mm -hmm. they, they were very influential as as critics. Exactly yeah. the two. Oh, well, they gave and, it a rave review. They gave it a rave review, and they apologized for not for not reviewing it when it came out. Um, yeah. it, it just it flew under their radar because the because the studio wasn't wasn't really pushing it because they they had yeah. some other film that came out at the same time that they were really promoting. I uh, think it was know, a Clint Eastwood movie. I think I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but but it was it was uh, very uh, disheartening to to, yeah. to you know, it's like oh man we we blew it. And here we and, are, thirty years later, and you know, it's, <laughs> okay, I guess we didn't blow it, you know. No, well, it's like the weird thing is, and I, I'll say this to people out there that, as far as sound is concerned, one thing I will say is, like, I still have the laser disc of this, mm -hmm. and um, the quality of the laser disc was exceptional. Right. Um, but the one thing that's really great about the um, laser disc when i put it on i still have all the equipment and i still feed it through a receiver and it comes out of my old school speakers that i have in like four corners of the room and the sound that comes out of that laser disc is astonishing especially right. with the chorale that shirley did uh -huh. you know the music just is just it makes the window panes rattle <laughs> you know it's yeah. uh, it's it's so it's, it's so warner brothers marketing dropped the ball but as far as producing what the first release like the vhs quality of this and um it didn't come out on dvd for a long time mm -hmm. but right. that laser was exceptionally well yep. done and it's yep. a nice package too mm -hmm. you know so yep. there were some things that warner brothers really did right you know mm -hmm. yeah they just they just didn't uh well I think that I think that I remember I heard it said that Warner's uh, reaction to when they were asked, like, why aren't you advertising this thing more and giving it a broader release? And the answer was, well, this is merely an advertisement for the direct to video release. You know, you know, right. it actually was an attitude. And it's like right. and there is a, there is a point to that, too, mm -hmm. you know. But I think but, they did underest underestimate how well it would have done with theaters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but of course, Dan and I are merely directors, so we're not involved in any of those discussions. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> we are well, just picture drawers. I'm very good ones at that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. I was just going to say as well that this 4K release is, I think, the fifth time I've bought this film. So VHS, <laughs> wow. DVD, Blu-ray, digital, 
4K. Yeah, fifth time. Wow. 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 And uh, and you'll have to get that HBO Max subscription when they actually put it on. <laughs> yeah, we've already got it. <laughs> <laughs> so you paid for it again. Yeah. Warner Brothers are bleeding me dry. <laughs> Yeah, no, but it's like it's so. In hindsight, you know, it's just Warner Brothers wasn't wrong. I mean, they they ended up making a, quite a lot of money off of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it it was the 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 stepping stone for for all the the the, the DVD directive DVDs that they did later on. It was sort of like you know, then they did Sub Zero, and then and then uh, and then all the rest uh, kind of came on the heels yeah. of this. So, so clearly, it made money, and and it it encouraged them to do more later on yeah just just not uh just not theatrical <laughs> so yeah and where would we be now if if this was a giant success in the theater oh we got big heads yeah <laughs> we, just, we just have larger heads <laughs> just like, like david mccallum and six finger outer limits. <laughs> yeah <laughs> outer limits <laughs> well anyway well, okay. I guess we're at time. Uh, any final thoughts you want to share before we call it? Um, Brad? Uh, 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 um, I, um, like I said, I really regret not getting, make, having the stamina to get a copy of this when I handed it, handed in the final board. Um, or to get a copy of the entire board to the yeah. entire movie. Um, because I, been, um, as a Xerox machine, though, you would have been there for like five hours. Well, I mean, I remember the the, 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 the day I finished working on it was the day that the whole crew went down because we were, um, our offices were in the Sherman Oaks Galleria and they had a movie theater as a part of the mall. And the whole crew went out to watch the second Batman movie. And I stayed in the offices finishing the storyboard and babysitting somebody's St. Bernard puppy and keeping an eye on it while <laughs> I finished off the storyboard. Um, and um, I finished it at five o'clock after or four o'clock or five o'clock after people had been coming back from the movie. That was the second one. And um yeah, the Tim. And I just I just wanted to get out of Dodge because I that very weekend I was gonna be some. <laughs> going to be starting drawing a limited, limited um a maxi um, a, a mini series for dark horrors that i spent the rest of yeah. 1992 and all right. of 1993 working on right. and so i just i just i just wanted to get out and i regret it in retrospect um and i i, I really you know <laughs> you know, you were talking about you're a mere, 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 mere artist, not you know, mere directors, and the, the execs never asked your opinions on marketing. And I, and the weird thing when I was directing on Batman and later on Gargoyles, I had enough artistic control that I, I thought of myself as being the director of my own little segment. Um, and it wasn't until later in my career when I started looking on the prime time. Um, adult animated stuff like King of the Hill and um, Bob's Burgers that that um, self opinion was um, well I was disabused of that opinion. Now it's like you know you're you're you you are just the writer's wrist. Okay, yep. Yeah. But it, back in back in the good old days, of Batman and no. Gargoyles, um, I was definitely I felt like I had art, a large a very large degree of artistic control over the proceedings. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that was one thing that that wasn't the case before. Uh, I mean, even at Deke, we had a bit of a, autonomy on stuff yeah. that we were working on uh, to some degree. Well, you know, at least, you know, uh, unless Michael Straczynski was controlling right. Ghostbusters. <laughs> but other than that, we yeah. had a lot of control over over what we, we did. And, and, and we exercised that with 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 a lot of responsibility. But uh, but we all, you know, we just had fun doing cartoons we knew it would be fun yeah and batman you know bruce encouraged that um and yeah. uh 
And 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 so did the network to some degree. You know, they weren't yeah. just precious with the scripts. They they let us do what we you know. Before that, I'm telling you, they would look at a script and they'd look at a storyboard. And if things were different, you'd get notes from the network going, "Why does it say this in the script?" And and they go, they they do yeah. this in, in the board, and you'd have to go back and and do it like the script because that was the yeah. way things were always done. Um, and. Uh, and 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 now you know on Batman we had more more freedom to to flex and and tell a yeah. cinematic story, um, yeah. and and we we're working with good scripts. Let's let's not make no mm-hmm. any bones about that. It, they were fine. It's just that we just knew how to plus them and make them more visual. Um, and and and, and also we're we're playing to the animation studios that we knew they were doing. Yeah. When you got you when you got a studio like Acom. You knew there was only so much you could get, and mm-hmm. then when you knew it was going to TMS, you knew you could relax a little bit about it, right? And right. Actually, ask and board more and ask for more. Well, and, and it's and funny because yeah, no, go ahead. Then. Well, Bruce had a bunch of rules about like how Batman is depicted, and we we got it, we understood because and it was based yeah. on Adam West of all things, where where you never see Adam West without the cowl. You see, it's it's he's either Bruce Wayne or Batman, and and you you don't actually show that transition because we want to m- mythologize him to some degree and really focus on 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 the separation between the two, so that when we do see it in this movie, it makes a really big impact. And he's really you know, and 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 the few times that he did it in your show, it was all your shows. It was always for a reason. It, we break those yeah. rules, and it stands out. But when I was like doing uh, Blind as a Bat and and they were like, oh, and here we get to see Batman put on his cowl because they love the whole thing, how Neil Adams would always draw Batman without the cowl in the Batcave. And we're like, it, no, it, you, you no, no, <laughs> no, you, you you demystify him that way. You, we, we really want him to be mythic. So so we'd always like show him putting on the cowl in shadow. We'd always and, and and the writers never got that. They they were always sort of like going, ah, oh, well, okay. here are the here are the artists being all indulgent. And you're like, no, it's a visual. You, we we want to mythologize the character to some degree. Yeah, it doesn't happen until Rachel Ghoul shows up in the Batcave. Right. That's the and that, first time, and that's and and, and, and and again, it's a vulnerability it's a issue. That's why it happens. And and it's yeah. same thing in this film. We see him take off the cowl because he has no other choice. He's no other options. It's it's his his back is against the wall, and he literally, you know. So it's and I know, or or he's vulnerable with 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 Andrea. He's he's you mm-hmm. know letting his guard down. So it, it, it's it's this is the film where that happens the most. So all well, I gotta say, curious. well, there's one thing that I have to say about this is that um, there's the bat. Uh, the bat wing, right? The cops have captured it. <laughs> Does that mean that, <laughs> that Gotham police now has advanced technology? <laughs> no, that's, my, no. that's one of my problems with the, what, 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 that's what, one of my few problems with the movie. When he finally gets home, the, he hits the, the auto, you know, the, the, the <laughs> autopilot and it just like, a couple of cops, of cops fall, fall off. It, takes <laughs> off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it goes home. It, it, yeah. So, yeah, and of course, I don't know how he gets, you know, to the point where nobody can track it, where it's a, it must be in stealth mode or something. So nobody, nobody Tell knows. You, it's where, it's yeah, a flying, it, it's a Foo Fighter. It's a flying saucer, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, Brad, I think you were going to say something a second ago. Oh, um, well, on one hand, the scripts were good. And on the other hand, I mean, I, you know. Kevin referenced Michael J. Straczynski on the first season uh, of did. Ghostbusters. He did. Um, where where um, somebody did. So it was referenced. I, I, I did. Where, yes. Um, where he was extremely controlling. Um, and we had to go back and redraw to fit the scripts, which was yeah. problematic because the scripts were, you know, just timing out the dialogue for the 22 minute episode. Frequently, the scripts would be like 20 minutes. Yeah. So yeah, um, we'd end up with very... a sixty. We'd end up with a sixty-page script. Yes. Right. Yeah. And it was um, it, very difficult to establish mood when characters are continue or horror when characters are continually doing yada yada jokey dialogue. Yeah. And so with the um, Batman scripts, they were good, and yet I never 
I mean, we we changed the scripts. We made yeah fixes here and there. I mean, there was one like in um, Hearts Heart of Steel Part One. There was this whole bit where we're following the little robot through Wayne Manor, just like page after page of script. And I just cut all of that. And yeah. you know, no nobody argued with me. Yeah. I mean, I made an editorial the decision about the script. Yeah, and yeah. It was but just the sort board of like, worked. The board and it worked. Board. That's the yeah. thing. It played, yeah. and nobody missed it. And so that was the thing. It's like, does it does it make it better? Okay, fine. Yeah. But let, let's right. go with that. Yeah, like feet of right. clay part two. Remember, Brad, feet of clay part two. Um, just with, to back up what you're saying, I just remember that script was like. Again, it was like another 50 pager, 45 to 50 pages. And it, just where it was all about like uh, Clayface mimicking um, tables and mimicking a chair. And he's mimicking a grate and he's mimicking, you know, you know, a washstand or something. And uh, and then the whole thing with the electricity where like he goes up to the, you know, he Batman follows the cop down saying, hey, that badge is wrong. And he's chasing oh. him around the streets, and then he gets hit by a big electrical line, and that's how come we know that he's. A and, and and also, Kevin, you 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 cut the the most important thing that the writer thought was going <laughs> to sell it was that the cop didn't read the guy his rights, and he's oh, like, yeah. no cop would get away with that. And and this is you know this is where you know the, the story <laughs> fails miserably, and nobody watching the episode ever cares batman just intuitively knows because he's being too rough with the guy that he's yeah. not a cop we don't yeah. need to we don't need any of that stuff it reads perfectly the way it was yeah. boarded and the, and the way electricity it and the whole electricity thing was i remember giving it to brad and brad's like well how, what do i do he says well he's just got a prod and he you just do it you know he pokes a piece of clay and then the clay like goes into all these abstract yeah, yeah. shapes that brand and, 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 like, and it, yeah yeah and, and, and it, it just that one little the, thing yeah and it foreshadows yeah. the ending which is awesome because that's that's yeah. the, the the magic of the ending is like there there we see it right you know it's brilliant you guys yeah. are geniuses yeah. <laughs> well done brad <laughs> well yeah yeah <laughs> no but we no. would like in this movie it's like i said completely deviated the miniature city was not in there at all and I really think that it makes such a nice set piece. Not wow. again to Absolutely. not to pat my not to pat myself on the back, but I think that like the combination of like outside you got the giant stuff and inside you got like the small yeah. stuff. So it's like Batman goes from being Godzilla to being, you know, Gulliver, yeah. you know. And, and and what's what's also fun is is just um the 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 Joker dressed as a building is such a brilliant, <laughs> absurd thing for him to do, and it's. Also I love based, that. But I remember I came up, yeah. you came up with it, but it was based on a real picture. Yeah. There was some like when yeah. the Chrysler Building opened, there was like some big party yeah. in New York where people dressed as buildings as their favorite skyscraper. It was yeah. like, and it was like the goofiest photo in the world. I'm sure it's on. You know, I'm sure you can Google it. But that helped inspire. No, it was it was in the yeah. Hugh Ferris book that I had. That's right. And I just yeah. went like, oh. I remember Ted is, laughing is... so hard. Ted Blackman thought that was the funniest thing in the world. And yeah. and and then you just like you put it in the movie, you know, it's it's awesome. No. Well, no, and it's such a joker thing. It is. You know, it is. and you don't and have to. And he uses it as a it. weapon. And he uses it yeah. as a weapon on top of it all. It's like, and another yeah. thing that never made it out of storyboards is where he takes that thing and he doesn't he's gonna stab Batman and Batman rolls the side. In the original board, he doesn't roll aside. He yeah. gets stabbed through the shoulder. Yeah. Oh. And yeah. he has to yank that thing out when he says yeah. Joker and he pulls the spike out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I wish I could show you um the, the 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 blood that I've got on the thing. Uh I don't think I don't think it reads on my phone, but that's that's the shot. But there. Uh, yeah, so that's and there's, I got a million of no. I mean, I I don't know if I do or not. I don't know what else. I just mostly bad animation in that in that in that VHS tape that got fixed. But that that was one of the little bits that was that was cut. So it's kind of neat. Well, so, anyway. All right. 
Right. <sighs> Enough of these idiots. <laughs> yeah. hey, no, I could I could sit here and listen to you all day. Um, but I just want to say thank you so much for coming on. This has been fascinating for me, and I know loads of people are going to love listening to this. Um, I'd love to talk to you again. Maybe we'll sort something out, uh, something else out in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, and just wanted to say thank you. I know it was your job to make this show and these movies, but it's had such a huge impact on so many people, including me. Uh, and I really appreciate it. My voice is no. breaking a little bit then. Oh, no. getting emotional. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, that makes me happy. Good. And, uh, um, I, you know, you, you're welcome. Everyone is welcome, you know. And Absolutely. Like, yeah. It was like, it was done for me when I was a kid. Where would I be if Jack Kirby didn't do the comics he did? Where would mm -hmm. I be without Alex Toth? Yeah, you Doug Wilder. Doug Wildey. Yeah. Where, where would we be without um, the guys that, you know, busted their balls to do Johnny yep. Quest? Yep. You know, as well as they did. <laughs> and those Fleischer guys. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Where yeah. would we be without Max and Dave Fleischer and, the, yeah. you know, all the, the artists? Seymour yeah. Knightel. Yes. All those yes. Guys. Dan, Gar Dan Gordon and all those guys that work on those. Um, and by the way, I want to thank you very much for your wonderful videos. They're very, oh. very well produced. They're, yeah. they're, they're very thoughtful. Now. Your your videos are are really really good, um, and and it, and they did they they yeah. you know I I just there's there's they're just they're all wonderful. So you well, you're, did you're, you did you I I I get did you see the one that Luke did of um I sent him the cut storyboard from Heart of Steel Part Two. Yes, he, I did. He he he, he yeah. Oh, that built was an animatic. I, I built an animatic with sound effects and the keys I know. and truck ins. It's, it's extraordinary. Like, wow. Yeah. No, I know. It's, I know. It's it's you amazing. Have to do that with my own storyboards. I know, right? Well, I'm glad we, you we liked hire, it. We got we got to hire you for that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I've already got a job. <laughs> my boss won't let me go. <laughs> um, it's really nice. But yeah, thanks again. And I really appreciate your kind words there. Um, I'm really bad at accepting praise. So um, <laughs> how do I end this call? <laughs> well, I, 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 got, I got errands to do so I can. Yeah. Can, yeah. Cool. Yes. Uh, right. Well, have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Yeah, Take thank care. You.